All right, let's talk about graveyard biomes. Graveyard biomes have a unique thing called Ectomist that allow you to craft some pretty unique things. Sometimes even NPCs can sell unique items when they're in this biome. So the graveyard biome can definitely offer you a few different things. But unfortunately, you got to make graveyard biomes with graves that are dropped when the player dies. So for hardcore players, graveyard biomes really don't seem to like be an option. But something that's very overlooked is like NPCs the NPCs. also drop graves when they die. Yeah, that's so obvious. How is that so overlooked? For this next trick, go and grab your nearest blade. Okay, Find the nearest me. NPC. I'm sorry. Do, do, do. <sighs> Kill enough of those guys, and you should have enough graves to actually create a graveyard biome. If you're in need of Ecto Mist and you're playing hardcore, this is how you're gonna have to do it, man. <laughs> This is it. Yeah, so if you're gonna go murder all your NPCs, I should probably tell you the benefits of graveyard biomes. The best use I've found for these is crafting boulder traps. Smack those guys in your arena upside down, and they work great for farms. I mean, just check it out on the pirate invasion. Each time a new layer of boulders come down, it's just like a clean sweep of the floor. I mean, these guys stand no chance. And the crafting recipe is just stone. So these things are pretty cheap. Boulder traps also work very well versus the destroyer. If you want to try that out. I mean, bro, just, just look at this damage. This is just the boulder traps. But let's not forget about the Abigail's flower, which is a summoning item you could find growing as a flower next to graves in a graveyard biome. I mean, this thing is a beast in early game. I definitely recommend checking it out. Yeah! But yeah, other than that, I don't really see a use to the graveyard biome for me. So if you don't think it's worth it to murder your NPCs, I don't blame you. But if you're fine with murdering them, you can get some real good items that'll help you run. Alright, so this next one is for all those goonies who play on Crimson Worlds. I mean, personally, I highly prefer the corruption. It's just like, the OG biome it offers you things like the shadow armor, which the crimson doesn't. I mean, I don't really know what's attractive about this. And you got these weird goobly goblies chasing you like, what the heck? But the one thing you don't have to deal with in the crimson is worms. Which is great, because if you just want to speedrun some crystals, you can get around this way perfectly fine and safe. I mean, if you're down to play like a little turtle, this is going to be great for you. Now that last trick reminded me of something you should also be doing when you start a new world, and that is finding a cave near your evil biome. I'm telling you guys, the amount of times these caves lead directly to a shadow orb or a crimson heart is crazy. And combined with the fact that you most likely will have bombs from pots within the first five minutes, this is just free loot. I mean, here's some examples. I'm just so close to these, these crystals. And if you didn't know, the first weapon that'll always drop from a crystal is a gun, which means you got the arms dealer if you blow this thing up on day one. <laughs> I always like to skip my starting cave and find a cave closer to my evil biome if I can. And even if I do go down a starting cave, I always try to go left or right to find my evil biome. Because there's just always a crimson heart or a, a crystal right there. And you can avoid all danger with your evil biome and just get some free loot. Now, let's talk about the mechanic for a minute. So most people think you can only use her while- Alright, very interesting. Thanks for the tip.